Hey guys, welcome back to Talk Tuesday. Up, up on the Tuesday. So today we're talking about royal family conspiracy theories, and I actually love talking about the royal family. I don't know why these people interest me so much. I never grew up learning about them. I mean, I am an American, so it's not like it was part of our culture. We didn't hear about it much, and I knew nothing about the royal family until about two years ago when I started researching Princess Diana conspiracies, and I do have a video on that if you haven't seen it. It's like one of the first conspiracy videos I did, and it really, really made me interested in the entire royal world and the sketchness behind these people, okay? So today we're gonna be looking at a bunch of different theories, not just the Princess Diana one, although I will touch on that. But before we get started with that, I did wanna let you guys know that the Monk giveaway has just ended. I have chosen winners and another one will launch next Tuesday. Um, but in the meantime, if you do wanna pick yourself up a Monk, essential oil diffusers, completely recyclable, no tobaccos, no chemicals. You breathe them in through your nose, out through your mouth. This is not sponsored, but I do have an affiliate link in the description box for more Monks if you decide to check them out. So anyway, let's go ahead and get started. So the royal family definitely has an element of secrecy around them. They are really quiet about what they share in the media. Um, they always like to keep themselves pretty separate from the public as far as personal things go. They keep a lot of things to themselves. And I think that's why there's so many conspiracies about them is because they're so secretive and so powerful. And I think they're the biggest landowner in the world, if not one of the biggest. You might wanna go ahead and check me on that because it's not in my notes. I just remembered that off the top of my head, but I'm pretty sure Queen Elizabeth is one of the largest real estate owners in the world. And when someone has this much power and money and uh, history that goes back a long time and their secret on top of it, people are going to start piecing things together. So here are some of the theories that people have come up with regarding the royal family. Conspiracy theory number one. Prince Charles and Princess Diana had a secret child. In December of 1980, uh, Diana, who was 19 at the time and believed to be a virgin, was ordered by the queen to go to the gynecologist just to make sure she could have kids and keep that royal bloodline going. So Diana's eggs were harvested and Prince Charles' sperm was collected. The theory goes that one of the doctors who was working on this secretly stole one of the embryos created by them and implanted it into his own wife. And this would mean that the doctor's wife became the surrogate mother of Diana and Charles' secret child. And this daughter was named Sarah. Apparently, Sarah was born in October of 1981, 10 weeks after Princess Diana and Prince Charles finally got married. And eight months later, Diana would have her firstborn son, Prince William. May we see your son, your Royal Highness? Now, this theory is obviously pretty sketchy. We really can't make sure that it's true. We're just taking people's word for it, so it's absolutely in the theory range. There are reports that this girl, Sarah, was constantly being told that she looked like Princess Diana while she was growing up. According to the theory, Sarah's surrogate parents died in her late 20s, and this is when she found a diary and the embryo was stolen. In vitro wasn't even created until like 1978, so it wasn't nearly as popular back then. But according to the theory, this exam was was carried out by George Pinker, who was the Queen's gynecologist, but no one knows for sure. Theory number two, the royal family is actually alien reptiles. So this is David Icke. He is a TV celebrity, broadcaster, author, and conspiracy theorist, and he is one of the many who believe that the British royal family are actually descended from a reptilian bloodline. And he has actually traveled to over 50 different countries to do research on this theory. According to him, all like famous people, elite people, the Illuminati, the royal family, anyone who's really powerful and in charge of shit is connected to this reptilian alien blood. Now what's really interesting about it is if you watch my video about RH negative blood, it might make sense. I know this theory seems like it's out there and I'm certainly not saying it's true because I don't, I definitely don't know. If you look into RH negative blood, there's some really weird things about it. Like most of our presidents, the entire royal family have RH negative blood. And this blood is believed to be traced back to one specific area. I'll link the video below so you can check it out, but it does all come from one place. And a lot of people believe that people with RH negative blood are connected to this alien race. And he believes that all these people, presidents, elite, the royals, are all connected to this bloodline that actually goes back to an alien-human hybrid. So they are the offspring of a hybrid mix between human and alien. So this is getting crazy really fast, right? <laughs> but what's really weird is that in ancient texts all across the world, including the Bible, there are accounts of reptiles interbreeding with humans, and this would create a hybrid bloodline. Now, of course, the Bible doesn't just straight up say this, but there's little things like 
the snake in the Garden of Eden. Was it really a snake or was it a giant reptile human? And in Hebrew, the name for snake means two-legged, standing upright humanoid reptile. Um, one of the um, traits is an obsession with ritual. So when you look at all the pomp and ceremony of the, 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 the royal family, you know, uh, with Buckingham Palace and all this stuff, and all the ceremonies and the guards and the horses and the colors, you're looking at um, ritual. He believes that these humans are part human, part God, and that's how they became the most powerful family of the world. And he believes that the reason that the royal family has such a long history of inbreeding and incest, they do, is that they were trying to make sure that this blood stays as pure as possible. So when people have asked David, where does this race of reptilian aliens come from, he says, from outside the human frequency and the range of visible light. Very interesting stuff, and I thought it was interesting that Vice was even reporting on it. Theory number three. Prince Harry is not Prince Charles' son. For years, many people have suspected that Prince Harry is actually the son of James Hewitt, who might have had an affair with Princess Diana. In an interview, Hewitt said, it was never her intention to fall in love with me, and it was certainly not my intention to fall in love with Diana, but it happened because of the circumstances throwing us together. It's very difficult to say how physical she wanted the relationship to become. I'm not going to suggest one way or the other whose fault it was. It developed and it was mutual. There's actually a ton of people that believe this theory and there's a lot of photos of people comparing Prince Harry to Hewitt and comparing him to his father, Father Charles. So this theory may not be true, but damn. I must say, he looks a lot more like Hewitt than he does Prince Charles. I mean, he really looks nothing like Prince Charles. Theory number four. Queen Elizabeth was actually a man. Now this one is stretching far back. It's very hard to confirm resources on this one. But the story goes that in the 16th century, King Henry VIII sent his daughter Elizabeth to live in the Coswald village of Bilsey, but he sent her to this small village to hopefully have her avoid the plague, which was killing everyone. There was currently a huge outbreak of it in London. Everyone was freaking out. And so he decided to send his daughter far away where she couldn't get the plague. But apparently she got sick anyway, and she died after a few weeks of fighting while living in this village. Now this was a big issue because apparently Elizabeth was like the favorite child of the king. And she had two caretakers, Lady Cat Ashley and Thomas Perry, and they only had one job, keep her safe. So when she passed away, they were very stressed out and upset about this because they didn't want the king coming after them. Because if you didn't know, kings weren't so nice back then. It was pretty brutal. If you wronged the king, um, chances are you're gonna die. So even though it wasn't their fault that Elizabeth died, chances are if he found out, he would kill both of the caretakers, likely chop their heads off. So the theory goes that the caretakers decided that they needed to replace her. They were looking for another girl who looked similar, but they could not find any other girl. So instead they found a boy and his name was Neville. Apparently he was around the same age as Elizabeth and apparently he was actually friends with Elizabeth while she was living there. And according to the theory, because the king lived so far away, he didn't really even get to know his daughter that much and barely knew anything about her because he lived far away from her. So apparently the good old switcheroo worked. The king did not notice that his daughter was now a little boy. What's really interesting about this theory is Bram Stoker believes it, who is a very famous writer. I talked about his work earlier this year when I did the video on Dracula, the real Dracula. Bram Stoker actually wrote the fictional Dracula. He actually included this whole story as the final chapter in one of his books called Imposters. Bram Stoker had heard stories over and over that a coffin had been found in Bristley during the early 1800s with a skeleton of a young girl in it with fancy clothes on, like jewels and shit the royals wear. And a lot of the locals who live there actually believe this theory as well. A ton of them still claim that a child from their village became the actual queen. And this also could possibly explain why she never got married. And even more interesting, she often talked about how she felt like more of a king than a queen. She's quoted saying, I have the heart of a man, not a woman and I'm not afraid of anything. In one of her most famous speeches to her troops in Tilbury, she said, I have the heart and stomach of a king and a king of England too. The next theory is that there was a bisexual royal family member. So the queen's current uncle, George the Duke of Kent, is known to be one of the most scandalous members in the family. And it is said that before he got married, he liked to mess around with blonde men 
And this is really sad, but he was actually arrested for participating in homosexual behavior. I'd like to point out that if he was caught doing that back in the olden days, he would have had his head chopped off. And he was also known as somewhat of a druggie. He had a problem with morphine and coke. He was only 39 years old. George died in a plane crash in 1942. But a lot of people think that his death was actually planned that he didn't fit really well in with them. They didn't want a bisexual drug addict in their perfect royal family. So they got rid of him. The official version of the story is that the pilot took a wrong flight path and crashed into a mountain. Seems like kind of a bonehead move. But rumors started circulating that George, who was also a pilot, had been flying while drunk. And there's also rumors that because he was bisexual, and this was back in the 30s when this clearly wasn't accepted, the royal families decided to kill him and make it look like a crash. Now there have been all types of assassinations in the royal family. Once it became a little harder to just <laughs> off with their heads, I feel like they may have had to get sneaky with their new ways of doing it. There isn't a lot of proof for this, but I do think that he was a hazard for them. He was a problem for them. He was an outlier. He was different and they didn't like that. And I think it could be possible that they did stage that crash, but there's not much proof for it. However, there's a lot of proof for our next theory, which is that Princess Diana was killed in a conspiracy. Now I have done a full video on this and I recently just did a full podcast on it. So I'm going to glaze this over real quick just for anyone who hasn't heard here at the end. So Diana was always paranoid that people wanted her dead. She had every right to be, just listen to this clip. Do you think you'll ever be queen? No, I don't, no. I'd like to be a queen of people's hearts in people's hearts, but I don't see myself being queen. I don't think many people would want me to be queen, actually. When I say many people, I mean the establishment that I'm married into because they've decided that I'm a non-starter. Why do you think they've decided that? Because I do things differently. Because I don't go by a rule book. I lead from the heart, not the head. Albeit that's got me into trouble in my work, I understand that. Someone's got to go out there and love people and show it. Do you think that because of the way you behave, that's precluded you effectively from becoming queen? Yes, I, well, not precluded me. I wouldn't say that. Um, I just don't think I have as many supporters in that environment than I did. You mean within the royal household? Mm -hmm. They see me as a, a threat of some kind. Why do they see you as a threat? I think every strong woman in history has had to walk down a similar path. And I think it's the strength that causes the confusion and the fear. Why is she strong? Where does she get it from? Where is she taking it? Where is she going to use it? Why do the public still support her? In 1993, 10 months after she announced that she was getting separated from Prince Charles, she also wrote a letter to her butler, Paul Burrell, talking about the manner in which she would die. And the letter said, this particular phase in my life is the most dangerous. My husband is planning an accident in my car, brake failure and a serious head injury in order to make the path clear for him to marry Tiggy. Diana and Charles had a terrible marriage and finally divorced in 1996. The divorce was finalized in 1996. Diana lost her Royal Highness title and became simply Diana, Princess of Wales. A year later, she was dead. This is when she started dating a man named Dodi Al-Fayed, son of Egyptian billionaire Mohammed Al-Fayed. And as many of you know, on August 30th of 1997, Princess Diana, Dodi, and their driver, Henri Paul, were killed in a car accident confirmation from our very own Foreign Secretary Robin Cook who's uh, in the Far East at the moment that Diana, Princess of Wales, has in fact been killed in that car accident in Paris uh, just a few hours ago. There had been extreme concern that uh, Diana was very seriously injured when she was taken from the, wreck the wreckage. There was a, a news blackout to all intents and purposes. There are many reasons to think that this car accident was planned and I obviously can't get into it all here. First of all, that car was in terrible condition and should not have even been on the road, let alone carrying the princess. And missing from this car was the onboard computer chip, which actually controls the acceleration, the braking, the steering, and the navigation. Another weird thing is Diana's body. Before any test was run, they decided to embalm her body. Now, I have had comments 
We talked about this in the podcast and I had comments from people who do this for a living that said, uh-uh, this does not happen. It's actually a law in France that specific paperwork has to be done before the embalming process started. But this was rushed for some reason. And the paperwork was not completed until after the embalming took place. And this, rightfully so, caused people to become very suspicious. You think when dealing with Princess Diana, you'd be doing everything by the books, making sure everything's done perfectly and how it is supposed to be done. Part of the embalming process is dipping the body into formaldehyde. This helps disinfect and preserve the body longer. However, once the body is dipped in the formaldehyde, it can no longer be tested for anything. The fact that they rushed the embalming process means that there was no chance for them to do any type of test on her and many people wanted them to do a test to see if she was pregnant. And the cameras, right? There were 14 CCTV cameras in the tunnel that Diana's crash took place in. Not one of them recorded the fatal crash. Some of them were even turned the opposite direction. And in the investigation of the crash, they were told that all the cameras weren't working. However, another citizen had just gotten a speeding ticket 15 minutes before from one of those cameras. Another weird thing is the driver's body. His blood levels showed that he had an extremely high level of carbon monoxide. You would be unconscious and unable to function at the level of carbon monoxide intake that they suggested he had. Hours before he had this crash, he was caught on camera just cruising around, looking normal, not walking sluggish. If you had this much carbon monoxide in your body, you'd be barely functioning. So a lot of people think that the blood samples were actually switched and switch with someone who had just committed suicide by inhaling carbon monoxide likely in a car. And that would explain the high levels of carbon monoxide. Henri Paul was always blamed for the accident, that he was drunk and crashed the car. But many people think that he wasn't drunk at all, that his blood sample was switched. There's so much more to that theory. I'm going to leave a link to the podcast where we did it in full. I mean, there's so much sketchiness talking about the ambulance, how long it took them to get her to the hospital, all these other sketchy things. Diana literally knew this was gonna happen or dude. She was constantly checking her car, making sure that there wasn't something messed up underneath it or she wasn't being bugged. She was constantly checking outlets. She was paranoid and afraid of the royal family at the end of her life. And I just really like Princess Diana. I get very excited about talking about this because I think, I fully think she was murdered. Like if there's one theory here today that I believe that is the one. I honestly could go on and on about it. But if you wanna hear a full podcast on that theory in depth, I will link it below. It's a good one to listen to. That is it for me today, guys. I hope you enjoyed some of these royal family conspiracy theories. Let me know if you've heard of any of these theories. Do you believe them? Which ones do you believe? Which ones do you not believe? I wanna know your thoughts on it. So leave me a comment below. And that's it for me today, guys. I will talk to you next time. Bye.